Hello everybody, just wanted to take a minute to talk really quickly about the isotopes and atomic mass uh, FET simulation. This is not something that's really required, but it's a useful way to look at um, atoms, isotopes, and understanding the abundance of those isotopes, if that will help you out with some of the things. So if we start off at this home page here, and you click on the isotopes, you can see, you can go through the first 10 elements. And I recommend anytime you do a simulation like this, you open up the different things. So we see here the symbol for this hydrogen one, atomic number of one right here, mass number of one. Atomic number means it has one proton, mass number means it has one proton and neutron combined uh, because it has no neutrons in it right now. Um, and then this pie graph down here, shows you the abundance of this isotope. So you see that 99.9885% of hydrogen isotopes are hydrogen one. As you do this, you can go through and you can build different isotopes of hydrogen by taking the neutrons and adding it to it. So hydrogen two, yes, kitty. Hydrogen two is uh, another isotope of hydrogen. It's got a mass number of two because it has one proton and one neutron. Did you want to come say hi? This is Minnie. She wanted to come say hi to everybody. All right, so um, hydrogen two, you can see it's got a relatively small abundance. It's got 0.0115% of isotopes in nature of hydrogen are hydrogen two. Uh, you can look and go through other isotopes of hydrogen. Hydrogen three, you notice here, it is an unstable isotope. So that's an important thing to know. Uh, when it says trace abundance in nature, it means there's very, very few atoms, but there might be a few that exist. Um, hydrogen four, uh, zero percent abundance. Uh, and you notice this one's definitely unstable, so this one just is not found. And then hydrogen five, again, this is not found. Now, hydrogen four and five might be atoms that we could uh, manufacture in a simulated way in a, in a particle collider or something like that, but they're not ones that are going to exist in nature, and even if we make them in a particle collider, they're probably not going to last for very long. They're going to decay really quickly. You can also come up here and click on different elements. So I might look at neon right here. Um, so when you get to neon, you can take uh, neutrons out if you want. I'm just going to take them out like this. Um, all of these isotopes of neon, I mean, I can get this all the way down to neon 10, but that's not really going to exist. We need to have a certain number of neutrons for it to actually exist. You'll notice all of these are unstable until we get to neon 20. Neon 20 is the most common isotope. 90.48% uh, of the uh, neon atoms are going to be neon 20. Um, this is not as uh, abundant as, or not as dominant as hydrogen one. You know, hydrogen one was 99.9. .9. This is 90.48. So there are some other isotopes of neon that are relatively common. Neon 21, 0.27%. Uh, so neon 21, again, you can look up here and think it's 10 protons, 11 neutrons. Uh, again, thinking 10 protons for the atomic number, 21 mass 10 minus or 21 minus 10 is 11 so you know the number of neutrons neon 22 also stable uh, 9.25 percent of neon isotopes are neon 22 so neon 22 more common than neon 21 um, there are some things if you look really advanced or if you have even numbers of protons and neutrons um, that that can help the stability of the nucleus uh, but that's more than we're going to get into and more than I got into before I got really into college. So uh, don't worry about like figuring out the ratio necessarily or thinking about the stability and arrangement of protons and neutrons. Um, that can help with the stability. I think that's all I, I'm not even expecting you to know that much. Uh, so neon 22, and then I can go and make neon 23, neon 24, but both of those are unstable and have 0% abundance in nature. So again, we could maybe make those isotopes of neon, but they're not going to last for very long. 
Uh, the other thing I would show you, if you come down here to the bottom, you can either go to the mixtures tab directly or you can go to the home tab here and come click on mixtures. Um, one thing that's good to do with this is you can, uh, for example, you can create your own mix of, so we're looking at nitrogen right now. I'm just going to put a bunch of nitrogen atoms in here and you can see how putting more or different nitrogen atoms affects the percent composition, affects the average atomic mass of this. So this is your mix. Um, but when we come and look at nature's mix, we see that um, really almost all nitrogen is nitrogen 14, 99.6%. Uh, there's a small amount that's nitrogen 15, so you can see that. So that means the average atomic mass ends up being 14. So if we look at neon, for example, um, which is one we looked at in the last one, you see uh, most of them are purple, which means they're neon 20. Uh, there are a fair number of reddish ones, which would be neon 22. Um, and then there's like three green ones in here, which would be neon 21. So uh, this is probably based on like a hundred of these, or no, a thousand of these. So like, 905 of them maybe are the purple ones, um, maybe like 92 of them are the red ones, and like three of them are the green ones. Uh, if we look at hydrogen, we'll see that, oh look, hydrogen one and then hydrogen two. Um, so only one in here is gonna, one of these atoms is going to be hydrogen two in real life. Um, and that's why the average atomic mass is really close to one. So you can use this simulation to kind of help through and just give yourself a better understanding of different isotopes and how common they are, um, and different cats and how common they are in interrupting the video. And yeah, all right. Uh, good luck with this, and I'm going to go ahead and stop this video now.